He's the only president of the Western world that I know that does that. Um, the whole war in Ukraine is based upon like but do you know, do you know the saints and... You know, there is a reason why Russia is run by KGB agents. KGB agents understand the human mind. And when you, when you have a nation controlled by people that understand the human mind, mm. you have Russia today. And at every echelon, or in the 1980s, the KGB controlled Russia. Now you have the inheritors of that still wielding force and control FSB, of the nation. Yeah. Yes, you have that. And that is because they know what the human mind responds to. So, 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 so see, it's interesting you said that because I saw an interview in which Putin was talking about the communists. Yes. And he said, any soldier, I'm just paraphrasing what he's saying, when they had to get up out of the trenches and fight in World War II, they knew there was a god. So what was he referring to? He was referring to that nature of going back to a higher being. No, he's referring right. to a destruction of man. An what internal destruction of man. Is that beliefs before the First World War had been said and resonated for centuries. They were not questioned. First world, the First World War it, it, it egalitarianized war as a concept. It brought war back to the nation for mm. the very first time in a way that we saw mass scale. Mm. So it caused a psychological collapse within the population. Mm. And what do you embrace when your internal is collapsed? The external. Mm. You seek it in the external. So he, so he, I understood from that interview, he knew how to play the religious flute. Yes. Because even now, I mean, I'm of the belief that it's possible that he may not even believe in God. It's possible. No, he doesn't. Oh, you don't think no, so? No, he doesn't. But he knows, for example... He knows right, what God brings to the population. Yeah, and not only this, He's saying things like um, oh, something about uh, not offending the Prophet Muhammad, peace be yes. upon him. Why? Because, because again, it's, it's exactly opposition why. to the West. No, I'll tell the you. Power, no? no, no, no. You, you like to believe that. Okay. But you know the region of Dagestan in Russia. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Where, yes. what religions do they preach? Muslims. Islam. Mm. And what is it? It's a prick in Russia's backside. Yeah. Because what happened in 2003, the father of Ramzan Kadyrov, the guy that runs Chechnya, Ahmed, now, yes. he was blown up. Yes. Mysteriously. Yes, yes. What then happened? The Chechen war ended. Mm. There were two Chechen wars in that time. Mm. Russia has been struggling with Chechnya for 200 years because Russia is an identity that it, it, for it to succeed, it needs to triumph over what it consumes. So there's a Russian ideology and then there's an Islamic ideology. And these two things are at odds. So what Putin is doing and what Putin does now is he gives more money to Chechnya than to any other nation. And it's really built up. Yes. Yeah. Because he fears. He fears Chechnya. So is this why also he is facilitating religion in Russia? Yes. Because he gives him authority. If you think about it, if you imagine a nation birthed in communist ideology, you grow up, you're birthed into it. It's, it's a religion of a different kind. Mm. You do not believe in God fundamentally. For the aesthetics, you can believe. Deep in your soul, you do not. So that is what Putin plays on, and he's very smart on playing on it. And he's also very smart with the propaganda he produces. Mm. Because Russia is able to invade and colonize, effectively plan to colonize a country, and yet there will still be people arguing against it. Because he has connected that to a struggle of the West. Because he wants it to be a struggle of the West. Mm. Because he has nothing else to offer the populace. So you know, this is interesting, because going back to that thing that you said originally about they understand the human mind, and they understand, and if if the people right at the top, they understand the human based psychology, they yes. can control the masses. Yes. So now let's go into the explanation of the phenomenon. So we have the nature of going back to God. Where do you think that nature comes from? It comes from within us. It comes from our consciousness. In the same line. Oh, sorry, sorry, yes. Not like that. Oh, sure. yeah, sorry, sorry, sure. It comes from our consciousness. Right. We, d we, are, we are only different to animals in the sense that we have consciousness. Right. We do not understand consciousness, so we try to. Have you heard of that? Um, I don't know if it's real, but there's supposed to be a thought experiment where you have a cow and it's looking in a mirror and you have a knife. You know about this one, right? I don't know, no, no, no. But there's something about basically human beings have from, from my recall, consciousness that other cows yes. won't, yes. they won't know what the heck's going on. Yes. There's a knife here. So, this is a very good point. So, have you heard of the Islamic concept of the fitra? Fitra, yes. I oh, have. you have? Okay. Yes. What, what do and you know I, about I it? I think I, what I say is that the fitra, I target it towards myself, right. as, opposed to what, as, as opposed to an external entity. Right. In the okay. sense that, in the sense that those feelings that you were, I, I, I talked to Ali Dawa a few months ago, and what, one of the arguments that he made, one of the one of the psychological studies, is that all humans exist on an island, and if they are, if they, if they are not, if they do not meet the real world, they believe in God. 
what does that tell you? That doesn't, that doesn't, that in itself doesn't prove God, but it proves humans. It proves the way that humans think. They seek God. Yeah, I, they seek God when when there is no external, yeah. when there is nothing else. But I think apart from it, they a, seek it. Yeah, no, I think there's a missing inference. It's not supposed to be an argument for God. No, I know. It's yeah, not. yeah, I know. I, know. I think that's where the mistake is. He, he was is, trying yeah. to argue the fitra to me. Yeah, he was. Argue, he was trying to. He was trying to then yeah. connect that to God. Yeah, but in my head, those two things are they're, they're separate. Like, like basically, the way the way I would explain it, and I think the way he he was explaining it as well, is that in essence, there's a phenomena, and that phenomena will always drive us towards yes, that. Yes. Yes. So, which is why I believe, if you look at, for example, the new atheist movement. They're very prominent. Of all of them. And where are they now? No, they, the thing is, is that they do not know how to argue. Because what they do, the problem with them, is that they argue in the realms of ideas that the religious create. So when, when, when I'm engaging... You mean when, they're just reactionary? No, so when I'm engaging in a debate to speak as corner, for example, purposely, psychologically, what, why... For me, the best conversations are the quietest. Why does right. why does a good conversation need to attract a mass? Mm. Does, does it say something about the idea? The mass is a psychological overbearing way of trying to push forward your manliness and assert it over the other. But it doesn't actually, if we, we, are, we either delve in the realm of ideas or we delve in the realm of conflict. Mm. So that is, why do they need the crowd? They need the crowd for the idea to work. The idea cannot work without the crowd. Do you think that's to do with social proof as a concept? Yes. Okay. Yes. So going back to this, because I'm sure you understand that you can make inferences from the, the fitra, uh, the way that we describe it. Someone can make an make a uh, sort of inference from an evolutionary perspective and say it's for social cohesion, it's for this, it's for yeah. that. And someone else can say, well, it's not an argument for God, but it's 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 something that drives us towards God and it's from God. Yeah. They won't make it as an argument, but they'll, they'll say it that but way. You see, you what, where situation. would you where would you fit no, in? No, you see in that situation, you're yeah. already building a relationship with the external. Right. So you internally you have this fitra, you have this idea. Then this fitra needs to be satiated by the external. Because you have to agree, God is not within you. Yeah, of course. God is separate to you. So this is a separate entity. So you build a relationship with a separate entity. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you drive, you, you target your emotions and your thoughts and your intellectual ability towards that. Mm. You don't see it within. Because that is why religious, religion is so successful. Because a lot of people can't find it within. And they, then God is an outlet for this, you know, this feeling of self-awareness that we have. It's a fantastic outlet. They mm. operate in such a good way. Mm. But my point is, is I'm trying to find that within me, mm. not within something else. And I, I'm trying to understand my, my soul a bit more, at what I react to, what what makes me fundamentally happy. Because like, what, what we should do, what we should strive for is a happy life. There, there is that, but there's also the the aspect that if you forget God, you will forget yourself. Yes, I agree with that. Okay. Because God should be with you. You know that's from the like that's an Islamic teaching. Yes, no, Islam has a lot of wisdom. Mm. I love in Surah Al Baqarah. You know there is a phrase about charity mm. and the idea that you can give to God, but it would be better for you to give without telling others. And that teaches humility. Mm. It, it, it conditions the human soul in a way. It teaches. It applies to people. People feel better. Yeah. Because of this consciousness we have, it feeds it in a way, mm. and that is why. That's why it's so successful. And in the way. Yeah. Going back to, like, you have some very good analysis from a history perspective, right? Do you think the future of the West, because I'm, I'm of the belief the future of the West is Islamic from the perspective not of conquest, not of invasion, not of immigrants having more children, but simply because Nietzsche's ideas of us having this existential crisis is happening today. People need an outlet. They are disenfranchised with Christianity, yes. so they're going to turn. What do you this think? This is a very good point, but this is, it only reflects the psyche of the population. Right. Is that once we have, what's the problem? What happens in the 18th century, the Enlightenment? And that is when people, for the first time, decided to question fundamental beliefs. And the problem is, is that those fundamental beliefs, have been, they have not had an answer apart from religion. Mm. Is that up till now, the only thing that can satiate oneself really is that once you're once you become self-aware, because within religion, you're, you're bounded. You're bounded to certain beliefs on purpose, because it needs to condition your mind for you to believe it. But once you, once you step outside of that, you understand that 
Islam is a very effective tool because it, 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 it targets the right parts of the soul and it, and it, and it puts forward things that we, we respond to. Mm. Fear, love, hope, humility, trust. hope. These are fundamentally human emotions. Yeah. And the problem is, is that when we step, when we, when we go outside, we can view those emotions but without the cloak they take in the form of Islam or in the form of Christianity. Mm. And the, the thing is, for us to be able to optimize these things, you do need some form of structure. Yes, yes. So I, I, and I agree with structure. Yeah. I, I, I study philosophy. Okay. So I, I, I believe that philosophy, unlike religion, you can choose. You know, you can, you can, you can earn, you can learn wisdom, mm. but you don't need to blindly follow it. You can challenge wisdom, and that will always make you a better man. Mm. Because if you challenge, like I, I, I take from the, do you know the Stoics? Yeah. Yes. So I, I take a lot from the Stoics. I believe in terms of they, they got, they had something there that was successful, but the complete neutralization of emotion was also impossible. Yeah. So ha have you been um, looking up the works of like Massimo Piglucci? No, who's he? So he's a philosopher from City University, New York, big Stoic. Like he's. He's somebody who's trying to, I, I, I mean, I, th I believe the Stoics came up with concepts which sometimes they just need to be contemporized. I think he's yes. done a good job of that. He's done a good, because we would sometimes think, man, this is so abstract, I don't see how this fits. Oh, it, you can really, once you apply it to your life, mm. you can see it's a face. Yeah. But that's what you I need said. a translation. But exactly, that's why I say I don't apply it fully. Mm. Because I, what the historians say, you know, we have power of our mind, not outside events. But outside events can influence the mind. See, now this is an insight which I believe a lot of um, a lot of people who get impressed by uh, these Stoics don't want to um, they don't want to speak about yes. because what they're doing is essentially going against their masters. Yes. Because I, I never understood this idea that you could totally say my mind is not going to be affected by the fact that there's a coronation going on, there's a war in Ukraine or whatever. It has to. There is. And the other, do you think? Do you think there's a vilification of emotions by these Stoics? Of course. Because the vilification needs to exist for Stoicism to exist. <laughs> to, to, to support one belief, you need to villainize the other. Mm. Islam does this very well. It's for al-Baqarah, right. right at the beginning. Christians did this, Jews said this, Christians did that, Jews said that, but Allah says this. So, would you say reason and emotion shouldn't be separated? They should be combined. You should be able okay, to find so them. let me ask you a question. Do you think Islam combines them or separates them? It, it does both. Mm. I'd say it does both. Because it, it, uses, it, it uses the emotions. You know, it, it uses the emotion of fear, I would say, most. But also empathy, empathy sympathy. Yes, yes, but the one defining factor of Islam is its mobilization of fear. It's actually love. It's love. No, but, we use, but, but when I hear the conversation between Christians and Muslims, one of the big things that a Christian that the Muslims like to think of is that Jesus will die for all your sins, so you're weak. You can sin all you like. I, no, I, I see that, but I think that could be certain certain people are highlighting the aspect of Islam because they're in a debate. But that doesn't actually mean that's the core. Yes, but when you highlight the opposition to inform the internal, the idea itself is not as strong because you need to attack. If you need to attack and not question, something is wrong with the idea. Is yeah, I, I, no, I, I do, I do see where you're coming from, but there's also another element which is that. If you is, explain Islam holistically, then you won't get this lopsided idea that it's about fear. Because look, no, I'm not, I'm not so yeah. lopsided. It's not yeah. lopsided. I'm not saying it's just fear. Right. I'm saying that's a key. It's a key emotion that Islam mobilizes, yeah. as opposed to, and Judaism does the same. Right. I'm saying within Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, Judaism yeah. and both. Sorry, and, could you just move yeah, sorry, okay. Judaism and Islam both mobilize fear more, and that is why there is a trinity in Christianity and not one God. Because in Christianity, the idea of God is different. The conception, what, what you understand to be God is different. God can be touched, God was talked about, God was, God was spoken about by his, by his apostles. Because the idea of God is, can be found closer to who you are and not further away. Because fear drives a wedge. Fear drives a wedge. It enforces that, it enforces that wedge. Yeah. So where would you put yourself in terms of, because obviously you said you're trying to look for the fitra 
but without going external. I'm trying to, I'm trying to embrace the fitra. Embrace the fitra, but the so thing but, is... But channel it. But I would, I would say you're not really embracing it if you don't want to connect with the external God. The external always needs to be. Yeah, but if you don't, like for, for example, do you actually believe in a in a real God? You don't. So, you, I would say you're not embracing the fitrah. No, because I'm, I'm embracing what the fitrah gives me, the questions it asks me. Because the fitrah, right. I'm within me, you said it's a medium by which, why we seek God, we seek God because of the fitrah. Right. We seek God because of it. That feeling, that seeking, that, that idea within you, I channel it in a different way. So that's not really embracing. That that would say repurposing it yes, for a different thing. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I apologize for my, yeah. my language. But okay. Yeah. But then I, what I would say is that you would never have true fulfillment. Why? Because if we have a human need to connect with God, if you try and harness that need into something else, you're not actually ever going to find that fulfillment. You're, that's the argument from the ones that embrace God. But what about you can find it because I have found it. I feel I have found it. I found my purpose in life. Right. But that, that's what I mean. But, but, is that when you don't have but, a fundamental but, purpose, when you don't have it, when you don't, in all, in all aspects of your life, you feel fulfilled, you seek the external because the eternal is unsatisfied. Okay, so I would ask you, could you be wrong? Could you be wrong? Yes. Okay. And could it be, I can be the case that you've just reached maybe 5% of your potential? Yeah. But my point is, is that I'm questioning that potential. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, students who want to learn and okay. want to be. So that's what it is. So let's, let's speed up the conversation from the perspective of God. What would convince you of there being a God? Nothing. Because I don't, I don't fundamentally. I, uh, there is a question mark where you have a full stop. Mm. I have a question mark. Okay, explain and, uh, that. Because I, I do not want to characterize. I do not, I do not want to build build my internal life the way I express myself, the way I, the way I am. I do not connect the, the, that behavior to the question of existence. For me, they are fundamentally okay. separated. No, no, okay, I see what you're saying, but that that doesn't actually give away your position. Though. That that's just, if you like, a pragmatic approach that you have. No, it's a position. Though. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't mean that you've actually come to. The point is, is that it, I mean, you haven't addressed my question. Right? I have, that's what I'm I have actually, because the point is, is that well, like I said, where you have a full stop, I have a question mark. Because the existence of a god doesn't affect my life today. So even if I was wrong, and even if I went to hell, I, it doesn't affect who I am, because I have lived a life, and I don't need heaven and hell to inform my life today. You see, because we built, in Islam, you are built, in Islam and Christianity and Judaism, there is a relationship built between this life and the afterlife. Yeah. And the afterlife is purposely, you know, the 72 virgins, it is purposely better. It is purposely better. So but, that, do you know, but do you know that in this life, for example, in the Quran, it mentions, in the remembrance of God, do hearts find rest? And again and again, rest. Rest. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm saying, I find rest in a different way. No, but it could be that you've only reached 5% of what your heart's capable of. Yes. Not, so, for example, I, the, I have reached paradise. What I said, reached axioms. Because in, in philosophy and everything, you need axioms. There are fundamental truths about this world. Everything else needs to be questioned. So, where, where would your self evident truths be? About the way a man, about how an honorable man should treat himself, you shouldn't kill yourself, you shouldn't kill others, you shouldn't, there are things that you, you shouldn't do because it makes you feel bad. And there is, a, and I would say, what my, one of my fundamental truths is that true wisdom is found in interaction and the mobilization of reason and emotion. Once you understand the golden mean between those two, yeah. you, understand, you understand the what, what I would say to that is that what you're saying, I agree with, but it does not actually, it, it doesn't, it's not mutually exclusive with belief in God. You can no. believe in that and believe in God. Yes, th th that's why I'm saying, exactly. Your, your attachment, what you have to God, I have to philosophy. Do you understand? But then, but then you could just be reaching 5% of your potential and it could be, it could but, be that you've friend, missed out on the paradise on this earth. different axioms. Reli religion and philosophy exist separately. It okay, that, choice, it, that I don't agree with. But it's a choice we, we, we have to make. I would say from a, from a, um, 
purely epistemic point of view, epistemological, they all begin from the same sort of root. Yes, they begin they all... within the mind. They begin within within the within the question of a certain, and they seek a certain answer. It is it is the belief within. It is the so it is you, the need to strengthen yourself. So, are you a coherentist or a foundationist? Coherentist. Okay, I'm a foundationist. Okay, yeah, that's. I mean, so that's, that's where we're different. That's exactly. That's exactly. So okay, that's so what I mean, when we have different axioms, especially in this place, it's quite difficult to understand each other. Mm. So it's almost like we are speaking the same language, but we're speaking very different languages. Mm. Because the, what, what, what fundamentally, what fundamentally drives our beliefs are different things, are different emotions. Certain emotions are categorized over the others. Mm. Anyway, my friend. It's very good speaking to you. Very good, good speaking to you. Are you finishing your? No, I finished. Yes, yes. Yeah.